Um, one thing before we get back to the program, and what I'm doing is I'm settling a debt that I promised a long time ago. Um, and uh, Dwight was uh, Dwight had made a comment earlier about um, about some miracles in the room, and one of the ones that I want to mention is last year we had taught my little girl how to do the uh, how to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, she's she's three right now. <clears throat> she learned it last year, and she didn't get to do it last year um, because we found out that my wife has breast can had breast cancer. And she is, a, she is our miracle, so um, uh, and my, meeting my wife is our miracle as well as my little girl too, but I'm very proud of both of them, and my wife is uh, so far so good. She got her scan back last week for people, I've had several people ask me. So um, she, uh, everything is as good as it possibly could be. But if you will indulge a three-year-old for just one minute, I promised her that she could do the, Nash, or do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So Madeline, will you come up, honey? This is Madeline, and she has practiced the Pledge of Allegiance and has known it for a year. She hasn't practiced it a whole lot lately, but we're going to give it a good try, okay? There's the flag. Come here, come here, come here. Keep the microphone. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, to the Republic, which is staying us. Under God, visible and worthy and justice for all. Thank you. Three dollars and ten cents a gallon. Of course, if you drove by the Exxon on the way in this morning, you'll see that it's three dollars and forty-six cents a gallon. I don't know if the rest of you remember all the uh, like uh, uh, was the the Berber or the Berbersol shave or what was the shave cream Barbersol, Barbersol yeah Barbersol okay they had the uh, Berber carpet Barbersol shave right so they had the um, they had the, uh, the the signs all up Highway 19 talking about how if you elect the Democrats gas will never go over a dollar seventy five a gallon again or anything like that in January of 2009 it was a dollar eighty three a gallon. We're 346 this morning. Oil is over $100 a barrel. At the time in January, it was $40 a barrel. Gold was $850 an ounce. It's now pushing $1,500 an ounce. So I guess uh, I, I, we got a lot of change, but I don't think it's the change that most people were hoping for. So that's part of the reason why we're here today is to get a good kickoff here for 2011, start building towards 2012. And we need your help. We need the help of all the people who are in this room. We need help finding candidates. We need help finding precinct chairmen. I want every, I'd love to see every single race in this county have a Republican challenger. From the school board all the way to the top, to the county commissioners, uh, and another uh, three years sheriff's race. Um, we've got to keep building towards that and not give up the momentum that we've started picking up here uh, at the end of uh, 2010. So keeping that in mind, please uh, look around the room, talk to friends, family, neighbors. We need good, solid, conservative Republican candidates to run in the future. We're going to have three seats that are up again on the county commission because of the passing of uh, Roger Haney. Hall Moore was appointed to fill his position, but uh, that's only going to be a two-year appointment, so that seat will come back open for election in 2012. So. We need to keep in mind, we need three good solid county commissioner candidates. We're going to need school board candidates. Time to start looking now. Let's not wait till the last minute. So I thank everyone for coming out today, everyone who has come out. We've got some others uh, we're hearing that are on the way, so that's kind of why I'm stalling a little bit. But uh, I also wanted to, uh, to mention that we have... Uh, I, I, I got an email from, I don't know how many people in the room, I, I personally think the man is, is pretty pretty sharp. I got an email from Mike Huckabee's camp yesterday. Uh, Mike Huckabee is going to be at the Barnes & Noble Tuesday, March 8th in Asheville, starting at 7.30 p.m., doing a book signing for his new book. 
So uh, anyone who's a Mike Huckabee fan, um, I got that email just yesterday. So uh, if, if you want to go see Mike Huckabee, again, it's Tuesday, March 8th, 7.30 at Barnes & Noble at the Asheville Mall. So um, you can go to MikeHuckabee.com and get all the details on that if you're interested in going to that as well. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention, um, on each table, the Republican Women's Club and the Buncombe County Republican Women's Club it, are, uh, are on that board for the county. And they've been uh, good Republicans in the time they've been up here from Florida. We're glad to have them. And Sarah's going to tell us a little bit about the program real quick and let you know what you're, uh, what you're donating to. Neighbors and Needs, a 501c nonprofit corporation that was formed in 1983. It serves strictly Madison County. It's not just a food bank, but that is our primary reason for being a, uh, operating. We operate uh, free of charge out of the uh, Marshall Presbyterian Church, but we're not affiliated with any church or any organization. We're strictly donation. Everything stays in Madison County. Uh, we, for the past several years, we have also been paying uh, electric bills for people to keep their electric on. We've been doing heating assistance. Last year we were able to do 80 gallons. This year we're only doing 60 gallons to, uh, because of the funds. So uh, it's not just food, but that would be wonderful because our main food drive is in November at Ingalls for two days, and the people in Madison County were wonderful this year. They turned out. But our pantry's almost empty because the need has been so great. More than 25% of the children in Madison County go to bed hungry at night and more than 25%, almost 50% of the senior citizens go to bed hungry at night in Madison County. So we need your help. Anything you can do, food, money, time, uh, go back to your churches, uh, ask your mission committees to do uh, a food drive for nervous neighbors in need. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I think most people have had the chance to get here that are coming now. We still have a few folks that have, uh, have said they're on the way and haven't seen them come through yet, but uh, we'll go ahead and move forward uh, with our program. I would like to ask, uh, so, that, so that none of us end up with indigestion this afternoon, we're going to have uh, Mr. Dwight Smathers will do our invocation and bless our, bless our uh, meal for us. And then following that up, we'll have uh, Ms. Beth Sutherland do the uh, national anthem today. And so uh, we'll turn it over to Dwight first, and uh, then we'll have Beth come up, do our national anthem, and then after that we'll all uh, head on out. And, uh, of course, the food is all you can eat. Take your, ch take your choice, your pick, whatever you want. Um, no excuse to go home hungry today. Uh, and in spirit of the neighbors in need, I think everyone will be able to walk away with a full belly this afternoon. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dwight. Thank you, Matt. You never give an ex-politician an opportunity to speak make your dinner a lot longer. We have four miracles in this room. And before I pray over our food, I'd like to recognize those miracles. The first one is Ralph Heiss is uh, an elected senator. Uh, back in uh, the early part of the fall there, we said it would be a miracle, and you pulled it off, and we're so proud of you. <laughs> Another miracle that we need to recognize is Lillian Welnick. Lillian had such a bout with her health last fall, um, it was just, uh, it was touch and go. And you were in our prayers, I hope you felt them, and we're so delighted to see you here today. Right. If you didn't know it, uh, Lockie Coates' grandson, Ryan Coates, has battled cancer now for two, uh, four years. Uh, Lockie just gave me the news that uh, he went down to Duke and is going to have to have some more treatments. But actually, he is a miracle, and Lockie, our prayers are still with him. Please let him know that we're thinking about it. Okay. Uh, the last miracle is just, and, and I tell you, you don't know how much I've worried and prayed about this old guy over here in the corner. But if you had seen Rex Freeman about a month and a half ago, you would have been concerned as I am, but it is so great to see you here today, Rex, and you're still in our prayers. And let's go to the Lord, if you don't mind. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for this day that you have brought us together, and we thank you for this land of freedom where we can express ourselves. 
Be with us as we conduct business here as a party. Help us to understand that in the end, it is you who rules the world. We thank you for this opportunity together, and we pray a special blessing on the food we're about to receive to nourish our bodies and our bodies to your service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Beth Sutherland, thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof that our flag was still there. Oh, say dust that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you very much, Beth. That was wonderful. Thank you. Getting back to our program now, I'm going to deviate briefly. Um, and because of the previous announcement, of course, uh, this is a, a cause that's near and dear to my heart personally. And uh, Robin Smathers, uh, I'm going to uh, give her just a couple of minutes to, to give everyone a special announcement. Um, and I won't steal her thunder. I'll let her tell you all about it. Thank you, Matt. Before I do that, my husband had to leave. Uh, he probably has gone to his moonlighting job since gas prices have gone up so much, but that really is what he's doing. But he, before he left, he said, please tell these people I'm an idiot. I said, you give me that permission? <laughs> he said, when you recognize some people, it, it never fails to overlook someone else. And he felt horrible that he had overlooked quite a few miracles in this room. And Paul Briggs and your wife are two of them. We have all been touched by cancer in some way or another, our family, our close friends. And with that in mind, how close it is to all of us and to all our hearts, I'm especially pleased and proud that my daughter Heidi has made a decision to walk in the Washington, D.C. Susan G. Komen three-day walk for a cure. That is 60 miles in three days. They do about 20 miles each day. And they and when she was asked, when she was registering, uh, do you have this in your family? And, and fortunately we do not, but that, not, that is not always the case. It, it isn't necessarily <coughs> familial. But she said, because we've been blessed, and so far we really haven't had it in our family yet, but it is just a cause that she wishes to take part in. And in addition to your applause, you can have the opportunity to help her in another way. Each participant in the walk must raise $2,300 for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And Heidi has used all of her best skills that she got in college, all those things we paid for, her marketing and communications. And she has Carabas donating a wonderful meal on March the 30th at 6 o'clock at our church's new fellowship center. They're donating, I believe it's chicken marsala and pasta pomodoro. We have Pepsi donating the beverages, J&S donating cobblers for dessert. And we are just really thrilled by this, and she is going to, she wants it to be affordable, especially in these times. Uh, I know that that wonderful meal of chicken marsala normally costs about 18 bucks when I've gotten it, but you can get it for $6 at the, on the 30th. Or if you have a family of four, you get an even better bargain. It's four for 20 so that's $5 a piece. Um, I have a poster up here and a sign-up sheet. We do need to have a number. We're expecting between 100 and 150 people. Uh, that evening. It's a Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. There will be takeout boxes as well, so if you need to take it and then scoot on to any church activities that Wednesday evening, 
Uh, we would just love to have you participate in this. It's a great bargain. Carabas will be out there cooking the meal on the premises. Uh, we're just really thrilled about that. They're not just sending it out in pans. They're going to come out and cook it. So it'll be a big event for us. Uh, Calvary is very proud of their new fellowship center being completed, and it's a great gathering place. We want it to be a light in the community, not just for our church. That's one of the goals of our, that committee when they were planning that building, was to, for it to be a light in the community. And so this is an opportunity for you to come and have a great meal. There will also be some Donate to Win items. Uh, Bernice Troutman has donated a print of one of her wonderful paintings. There will be a basket of wonderful items as well. So we hope you'll come out and enjoy us that evening. If all you can do is just come and get a to-go box, that'd be great too. But for $6 a piece or $20 for a family of, of four, I think you'll have a fun evening and everything will be decorated in pink, but men can still come anyways. <laughs> so please come up here and sign up or see myself uh, before the end of the day, and we would just love to have you participate and join us in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Actually, on our agenda this afternoon, uh, the, the uh, president, we're, we're gracious or grateful to have um, our president here from our newly formed, or newly reformed, technically, I guess. We had one at one time. And it went, uh, went away for a while, and now they're back, and we're glad to have them back. And our new president for the Madison County Republican Women's Club is Gail Davis. I'd like to introduce Gail to you real quick and give her a couple of minutes to address the crowd, and uh, then we'll uh, get on to uh, Senator Heights. Come on, Gail. opportunity to receive the charter which was done at the winter uh, meeting for the North Carolina Federation of Republican Women. Uh, you have, I, I, if you ever have the opportunity to go uh, and meet these women, it, it's an incredible thing. Um, I would like you to know that we um, are the fourth largest Republican Women's Club in the United States, the, wow. the North Carolina Federation of Women. We have 1,274 members, um, and being fourth in the nation is, uh, I, I was really surprised by that. It's quite an honor. Uh, the meeting that I just attended was, um, the, the keynote speaker was uh, Tom Tillis, and... Um, that microphone is for your direction, so make sure you're talking. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay. Um, and I was very inspired by everything that he said as well, I'm sure that... Uh, we're going to get some good information about the Senate. Tom Tillis gave us some really good information about the House. Uh, just real quickly, one of my favorite stories that he told was about the new gavel. And for those of you who do not know, uh, when the Republicans took over the House, um, they decided that the gavel was not sufficient. It was a little cheap store-bought gavel that the top screwed on, and they wanted something that was significant of the state of North Carolina and significant of uh, the Republicans now being in charge of the House. So he went on a mission to find some wood that was um, appropriate for the, for the uh, project. So he found a piece of longleaf pine that was growing in the state of North Carolina during the Revolutionary War. The house that this pine had been uh, uh, used to build uh, was not destroyed uh, during the, the subsequent wars. And so they got this piece of pine, and he got a Republican to, Republican wood turner, to actually make the gavel. And he said that shortly after him being installed, the Democrats were complaining to him about uh, the speed with which they were moving in the, in the house because they didn't do it that way. And uh, he also had a, a penchant for naming things. And so he had named this gavel Ray after his father, and that was quite a story of, of uh, an orphan who pulled himself up by, the, by his bootstraps, worked two jobs, went to school, and was the father of who's now the Speaker of the House, uh, Tom Tillis. And so his gavel is now named Ray. Ray is from Speed, Alabama. Uh, excuse me, Speed, North Carolina. And so when the Democrats were complaining, uh, Tom Tillis says, gentlemen, you know, Ray is from Speed. <laughs> um, we have uh, 58 new clubs in North Carolina last year, four so far this year, and the Madison County chapter is one. 
Um, we have 72,000 members nationwide in 2009, 77,000 in 2010, and the goal for this year is to have 80,000 members nationwide. Uh, the dues are $35 to join. The, the requirements are you must be a resident of the state of North Carolina and you must be registered Republican. Other than that, everybody is welcome. If you're not female, you can uh, be an alternative member and you don't have voting privileges, but you can come to the meetings and you can come to the uh, parties and the luncheons and things of that nature. Um, on a serious note, we have immense challenges ahead of us. Uh, we have our country to take back. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of like a banger when I talk about my country, I tear up. But I'm standing here in front of Ronald Reagan. And two stories that I remember about him. Number one, when the air conditioning went out in the, White House, in the Oval Office, in the summertime, and it was oppressively hot in the office, Ronald Reagan refused to remove his coat. He wore his jacket because he had such respect for the office. When we had the Iranian hostage crisis, 345 days, our hostages were held. When Ronald Reagan was elected, they didn't even wait to see what he would do. They released them. That's what we need in the White House. In order to... In order to get that back, we all have a lot of work to do. And our new Republican Women's Club is an important part of that. And all of you ladies out there, I ask you to please consider joining with us so that we can be prepared. In talking with our new senator just a few minutes ago, he was saying one of the problems that we had in the last election was that everything came too late. So we need to be proactive rather than reactive and make sure that we give our candidates the support that they need early on. And in order to do that, we have to get organized now. We meet at AB Tech the second Monday of every month at 7 o'clock. My name is Gail Davis. Um, I'm listed in the phone book if you need to call me. My husband's name is Gerald. We're listed under Gerald. And I hope you'll come and join us and work with us so that we can get the candidates that we need elected next year in 2012. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I can get you in touch with Gail, too, so if you can't find him in the phone book, let me know. I assume I have your permission to give out your email address. And, okay. Um, so we'll get you in touch with Gail if you're interested. Ladies, it's a... It's a great cause, and they've got a, a couple of things already that they're that they're going to be working on. And so, if, if it's if you want to get involved, uh, um, they they would welcome you with open arms, and we'd love to, to build that group up into something really special. And I we appreciate managed Gail to do for, is for uh, taking in, in our county. We did manage to get behind this guy pretty early, and I'm proud of that. And uh, we we accomplished a great. Uh, I can't really call it a surprise because I knew he was the best man from the get go. <laughs> Um, of course, you didn't have much competition when it comes to character, that's for sure. Um, so the, the, the best thing was it, was, it was a great honor for us to be able to elect this man. It was a great honor for several of us who traveled down for his inauguration. Um, it, was a, it was a special time to see the House and the Senate uh, come over to the Republican ranks. And uh, we look forward to great things over the next couple of years. Unfortunately... This guy's got to run for office every two years, so he doesn't get much of a, of a break from campaigning. So we need to remember that, and we need to support Ralph as things go forward. He's, they're working on some great things, and uh, I'm going to let him come up and tell, tell all of us about what they're working on down there currently and uh, some of the things that they've managed to accomplish as well and, and give him uh, whatever time he needs. And, and, and at the very end, if we have a few minutes left over and, and he's willing to stick around, uh, we'd like to do... Uh, uh, a question and answer se uh, session too. So if anybody has any questions that come up while Ralph is speaking, uh, please hold your questions till the very end and we'll give you an opportunity to ask them then. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ralph Ice. <laughs> Senator Ralph Ice. Thank you all very much. 
Uh, I couldn't be prouder uh, to be standing up here as a conservative and a Republican and saying that I am representing Madison County in Raleigh. When we came in a month ago now to the swearing in in Raleigh for the first time in 140 years the Republicans took control of the legislative branch of North Carolina. And in the Senate, for the first time in more than two decades, we look at a Senate not under the thumb of Mark Bass Knight. Great. He chose to take the honorable route and resign the day before uh, we were sworn in. There's been a lot of changes that we've seen. Typically a month into a legislative session, uh, you would see a group of legislatures who can't even tell you where their office assignment is yet. Most years, most biennium, they can't even tell you what committees they're on. I'm proud to tell you that the work we did beforehand, all that was in place on day one of this legislature. We opened up the legislature to technology. For the first time, legislators can actually use their computers and handheld devices on the floor. Democrats like Senator Tony Rand was afraid it was giving an unfair advantage to individuals who could look up information during debates. We've changed. We've seen a lot come through. I couldn't be more excited. But we've ran into Bev Perdue. Someone who I personally don't see, I've never seen a lot of initiative from, a lot of leadership or direction in this state, but I can tell you over the last month, somebody started pulling that chain. First bill we passed, Senate Bill 13, authorized the governor to take $400 million that she had already told state agencies to set aside this year, and we added to that $165 billion of funds we found that were laying around in accounts of different trust funds and other things that had no purpose other than drawing interest for those. And we said when we're facing a $3.7 billion deficit, let's take those funds and apply it to that deficit. Well, it touched some of those political powerhouses and silos of the governors. The number one being Golden Leaf. We were stopping a $64 million payment from going to Golden Leaf. The Golden Leaf Fund has $550 million sitting in that account for purposes that they have no designation for at this point. A little whining went out from her appointees and others. And the governor vetoed that bill. First one out. So our response to the leadership in the Senate is, next week we're sending back another bill and said, okay, you're not going to take those. Doesn't look like we have the numbers in the House to override your veto. But we're going to send you back another bill. Okay, you find $565 million in and cut it. Because we've got to get there in this direction. The governor played some interesting accounting numbers, and she's thrown out... Even from her own budget staff, I've heard since I've been down there that it's from a $4.4 billion deficit, when they're trying to tell you how bad it is, to a 2.2 when she drew her budget. I'm going to tell you, and, and until we get exact tax revenues in April, it's a lot of guessing. But what I can tell you is, you are looking at right now, what is approaching a 20% cut in state government. Now I for one am happy about that. Because I think we've got more than 20% of government that never needed to be there in the first place. And the governor sends her budget over despite a specific promise she made after the election in December, when the election November in December she became a conservative for a little while made the direct promise she would not be submitting a budget with any tax increases. She was going to make the tough cuts in state government. Well, 
After missing Valentine's night with my wife to listen to her State of the State address, it became evident that that is no longer the path we're going down. And on Thursday, she raised your taxes as sales tax again, $750 million, and pushed another $300 million to your county governments to pay for things like school buses and others that's traditionally been what the state tab has picked up. Well, there's conservative Purdue. That didn't last long. Um, I'm hoping the rest of her tenure won't last long. Because the next thing we did legislatively, both bodies, we passed Health Care Protection Act in the state, which said simply, it is illegal in the state of North Carolina for a government or government agency to require you to purchase health insurance. I've yet to find anyone who disagrees with that principle. 